brilliant. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm here with Dr. Chichi Abwaya. He's a consultant psychiatrist practicing in the NHS and in private practice as well. He's one of the directors of the Mind and Soul Foundation, um, and he's part of our congregation here at HDB as well. Chichi, it is brilliant to have you with us. Uh, welcome. So good Thank to see you. Um, it's an absolute pleasure uh, to be on and happy to explore this area, which I know can be difficult for people to speak about. Uh, but I know you have a number of questions um, uh, that young people are, are asking you on a regular basis. So whatever I can do to help, more than happy to do so. That's brilliant. Why, why don't we kick off? I'd love to hear a little bit of your story um, and how you came to specialise in, uh, yeah, in psychiatry and mental health. Yeah, so uh, I've been a doctor for 15 years now um, and 13 of those have been in psychiatry. I'm actually a second generation psychiatrist. Uh, my dad uh, is still practicing. Uh, and so like a lot of young people, uh, I had some interest in what my dad did for a living and um, always knew I wanted to be a doctor. And I, I did have that sense of calling um, to medicine uh, from a very young age, actually. Um, and just before I went to med school, did a summer job in a mental health hospital, absolutely loved it. And so right through med school, I, I felt I was always going to end up in psychiatry. So as a junior doctor, you try a few different specialties, but that was always the one for me. Um, and I really enjoyed my job. So I think I made the right choice. That's great. I'm so glad you enjoy it. Um, that's brilliant. What are, what are some of the ways um, and some of the tools that we can use to keep ourselves uh, mentally healthy in the day to day life? So I think mental health is, is an area people are really exploring a lot at the moment. Uh, and I think it's important to say that, of course, there are conditions uh, that somebody like myself will treat, um, like depression, anxiety, more severe forms of, of mental illness which aren't anybody's fault. Um, and so we've got to be careful whenever we have a discussion about prevention, because sometimes that can imply that if you do all these things, it's not going to happen to you. Uh, and if uh, you do have some mental health difficulties, you've done something wrong. And I think particularly within the church, you've got to be really careful uh, about uh, some of those narratives and the idea that if you just pray it away and if you, if you uncover whatever's going on spiritually, you'll be able to move forward. It, it doesn't work like that. Um, having said that, um, there are some things that might put us at, at more risk uh, from developing certain mental health conditions. Uh, so we want to all be thriving uh, and the danger zone we can refer to as languishing. So the sorts of things we'd look out for would be um, thinking about sleep. I'd say that's right at the top of the list. Um, so making sure we've got a good rhythm, I think that's really important for young people who might be uh, working late uh, into the night doing coursework and exams, uh, also paying attention to nutrition uh, and activity levels uh, during the daytime. Um, I know that you're really passionate about uh, exploring this area of isolation. I think staying connected with people uh, is really important. Uh, if nothing else, when we're connected with people, they can notice when we're not doing as well uh, and point us in the right direction. That's brilliant. You're, um, you're kind of right at the front line of innovating in some of these areas. You're involved, you're clinical director for the Tomo app. Um, would you tell us a little bit about that? The Tomo app is really um, aimed at helping people to develop and sustain healthy habits. And I guess it was uh, built with uh, younger tech savvy people in mind. Uh, but of course, these uh, challenging times that we're going through uh, mean that most people are fairly comfortable using a computer. But what it does is it helps to prompt people uh, with suggestions for healthy habits. Um, so developing and sustaining these habits, uh, these are, are good elements of hygiene, for want of a better phrase things that will just help to maintain overall good mental health. So it might be really simple things like um, having a stretch in the morning or going for a walk or connecting with people uh, that are our friends and family. Uh, and so it just uses a technology application to do this. 
it's brilliant and i've been i've been using it since looking at looking it up as we we're going to be talking it's um yeah right. and wide like wide ranging such a breadth of uh, kind of habits and things on there we um we kind of talk about a lot of the external things that we can do to help um impact our, our mental health um what about kind of the internal journey if we're experiencing negative thought patterns that sort of thing what are some of the the ways that we can begin to um yeah to kind of think about that and approach that there's no one size fits all answer to that, Sam. It's gonna be different things for different people. And I'd encourage anyone to spend a bit of time reflecting on what things they're generally interested in. So if you're like me and you're really into your sports, um, it's perfectly valid to find a solution in that realm. Uh, there are many people that swear by running. I, I run on a regular basis uh, and usually on the weekend, and what it helps me to do is to sort of reset, uh, to put the working week uh, to one side and to sort of signify the start of my weekend. And I really feel that my mind is clear when I do that. But for some people, when they're feeling very low in mood and actually going through depressive episodes, that can work. Uh, others, unlike me, are a bit more creative. Uh, so it might be things like um, engaging in some artwork, some crafts. Uh, and if you're someone that likes to journal, I think it'd be really powerful just getting um, good and difficult emotions down on paper uh, and reflecting on that. So I think the key thing is to is to work out what things float your boat and, and to really go with it rather than just copying what others are doing. That's brilliant. As a student community, uh, our vision is to see every student in London become a daring ambassador for Jesus. We're, we're uh, wanting to live as his representative in in every area of life and um we want people to discover the the good news and the hope that we have in jesus um what what hope would you say we have in this area uh, because of our, our faith in jesus what is it specifically that that uh, yeah faith in jesus offers into this context i'm gonna give an honest answer sam and i'm gonna do so say so more with my professional rather than personal hat um, because I do sometimes see uh, Christian patients who are experiencing difficulty. I think it's, it's important that we have these conversations within the church and we also recognise, uh, yes, the hope, but also the challenge. So, so bear with me on this. Um, I think it would be easy for me to say that um, as a Christian, there's um, an extra an extra element in our armory and I say that also with some caution because I don't want us as Christians to sort of have God on the side as a sort of add-on um, but yes that sense of, of hope and also a way of enduring through difficulty and taking on a different perspective that's definitely something uh, my Christian patients say but let's not forget the difficulties because one of the challenges uh, around mental health problems it, it's really encouraging that a lot of the people i do see get better and significantly so but like any other thing that happens to us uh, in the physical realm uh, it can take time or we sometimes don't get the results uh, that we expect to see and i think it's important to recognize that then that can be testing for people um, and that's why it's really important to get away from this idea that uh, as individuals we've done something wrong if those difficulties are ongoing. I think it's important for us to get the messaging right within the church and also for us to have uh, one or two people that we can speak to that understand these problems uh, informally uh, to just give us that encouragement. That's great. How, how can we as a, as a community of students, what are there particular things that we can be doing with and for one another um, that yeah, will, will kind of enable us to be a, a safe place for people to, um, to journey with these things and for us to support one another? I think that solution um, should come from the church and I don't mean the church, the organisation, I mean the, the young people um, that you're engaging with. If we take what's been happening um, in the world at the moment, uh, there have been a lot of protests, uh, and again, people can debate the, the rights and wrongs of that. One of the striking elements for me is that um, it's young people that are taking a lead. It's young people that are saying enough is enough, and they're showing way more courage than, than an old man like myself uh, and my generation were, were demonstrating at that age. 
So I don't think it's for me to tell young people within the church what the response is. Uh, all I would do is to encourage them to create that culture of openness um, so that um, people do feel that they can have discussions around these topics. Um, just this past week, Sam, um, I had someone that was in a relatively senior position within their church who was going through some difficulties in their mental health and said nobody recognised it. Um, even though they were engaging with people, seeing them on a regular basis. And that's the situation I'd like to avoid. Uh, and it, it speaks to uh, people maybe not feel comfortable talking about mental health problems, people not being aware that something maybe isn't going on. We're just not having the conversations uh, that we should be. So whatever it takes to get to that point where there's a more open culture, and also where people don't have that sense of stigma. Those are the areas that really want the church to focus on. So helpful. Um, uh, final question. If, if there's a, a student who's listening to this um, and who's particularly struggling at the moment, um, what would you recommend that they do? Sam, it's been an exceptionally difficult year for everybody. And if there's only one thing that people remember, uh, it's a bit of a cliche, but it's 100% true. We are all in this together and everyone's been affected uh, at this particular time in some way or the other. There isn't a better time to seek help to have these conversations than now. There's no one place to go. Um, I think the church has a role to play because uh, it might be that those conversations start in the church. Uh, and I'd encourage people to go through mainstream healthcare services. Um, predominantly the GP is your first port of call if you're having any difficulties in this area. There are uh, services uh, that you can often approach without even needing to go through your GP. So NHS psychological therapy services, uh, you can go online and look at the services in your local borough and often approach them straight away. Um, so I just encourage people that the help is out there. I know that um, there's a bit of a myth that the practices aren't open and that um, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, you can't easily access help. The help is there. A lot of it is remote initially, um, but it is available. And I'd really encourage people to do that uh, and to feel comfortable having the initial conversation with somebody they can trust. Chichi, this has been so helpful. Um, thank you so much for coming on and sharing with us today. Um, we really appreciate it. And we're praying for you in uh, everything that you do. Thanks so much for joining That's us. Kind of you, Sam. Thank you.